Hello everyone, this is Paul Brugarelli reporting for Abweb and Aviation Consumer. I'm in an experimental Cirrus SR22, 7,000 feet over Oklahoma. And I'm with uh, George Brawley. I'm helping him do an experimental flight on a new fuel called G100 UL. Now, if you've read on Abweb, we've reported on this. Uh, this fuel is an experimental developmental fuel that's meant to replace 100 low lead. And in order to get a new fuel to work, several things have to happen. First of all, it has to burn right, and it has to uh, burn without causing detonation. And today we're going to look at that in the test cell. And uh, last, it has to be economical to produce. We can't really report on that yet, uh, but we'll be able to talk more about that in the future. Uh, but first, let's take a little look at the history of why we need a replacement fuel. Since the mid-1980s, when the Environmental Protection Agency outlawed lead as an octane enhancer for gasoline, general aviation has been flying on borrowed time. The industry has been granted numerous waivers to continue using lead because no suitable replacements have emerged. And it's not for lack of trying. Millions of dollars have been spent on fuels research, but no ready answers have been found. Recently, a biofuel called Swift Fuel looked good, but lately the economics aren't looking too promising. Last year, Continental Motors began pushing the idea that 94UL fuel could work for all but high-performance aircraft, but for turbocharged airplanes, it seems likely that they would require electronic controls to adjust engine timing to avoid detonation. And late last year, the EPA seemed to suggest it's going to get tough about lead emissions. Here's George Brawley. I got worried when I watched the EPA for the third time say what they had to say about getting ready to lead. I think they're serious. It worried that uh, Tim and I, we came back from ALPA and we had a notion on how to do this. We went to work, we started blending fuels, and we came up with one that, uh, that uh, really does work. The data shows that it works. The only thing in our way right now is, uh, is some kind of a, an unreasonable certification requirement out of the FAA. And this fuel is, is just like aviation gasoline, it's made from complex hydrocarbons. That's the first statement in the existing specification for 100 low lit, is this fuel is made from complex hydrocarbons from uh, refined petroleum. And that's what this fuel is. Uh, some of the stuff uh, is not stuff that's presently made in refineries, but it's stuff that uh, uh, refineries either know how to make or can readily learn how to make uh, in the ordinary course of uh, building complex hydrocarbons from petroleum, which is stuff they do every day. Whether it has lead in it or not, high octane is the chief requirement for aviation gasoline. That's what keeps the engine from detonating at high power and high cylinder temperatures. In the engine test cell, Brawley showed us a detonation profile for G100UL. We're running on 100 low lead. You see the uh, red and orange balls lighting up. That's uh, uh, detonation on this engine. Now we can switch it over to the G100UL and you'll see something similar. The engine's running at 350 horsepower. Uh, it's just slightly rich of peak. Cylinder head temperatures are 430 degrees. The induction air temperature is 188 degrees. Uh, G100 low lead runs every bit as good as the 100 low uh, as the 100 low lead that we buy from the FBO here on the airport. Okay, from that demonstration, we can see that we need a little bit more of, of volume of that gas to get the equivalent performance that uh, uh, G100 UL gives. That means a higher energy density. What about weight, range consideration? Yeah, it's you got to hit your your head around this a little bit, but. Uh, the G100 UL has about 3.5% more energy, more BTUs uh, in each gallon, but it's a little bit heavier. So if you take a hypothetical, you know, 3,600-pound airplane with 100-gallon tanks full, uh, if you fill the tanks up, the airplane will be a little bit heavier, but it'll go 3.5% further in range. But if you take enough fuel out so that the range is a complete wash, then the difference in the weight of the fuel uh, on a 3,600-pound airplane is something on the order of 5 to 9 pounds. It's, it's completely negligible. So we're basically talking a wash. It's a complete wash. It's a drop-in replacement. Something very important to mention about it is you can taxi up to the tank with a half an airplane full of uh, 100 low lead fuel and take on and top the tanks off with G100UL, and it's completely transparent in the fuel tank of the airplane. 
So where to from here for G100UL? Well, as you can see from this video, the fuel appears to burn correctly. It meets most of the specifications under ASTM D910. There's some few a few tweaks that has to happen, and obviously some further testing has to be done. And one of the things GAMI would like to do is to sponsor a wider fleet a test among a number of Cirrus aircraft burning G100UL under an STC. And of course, the big question is, can refineries make this stuff profitably? Because if they can't, it'll never happen. That work is underway, too. You can find out more about G100UL in the March 2010 issue of Aviation Consumer. I'm Paul Bertarelli for Aviation Consumer and AvWeb. Thanks for watching.